how Prince William is being pulled harder between family and royal duty, how Harry and Meghan's new website could break the deal with the late Queen, and how the King may respond. Join us for all the big royal talking points. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Joe Elvin and here today is the Daily Mail's editor-at-large, Richard Kay, the Mail on Sunday's royal correspondent, Natasha Livingston, and Sarah Vine, who is a star columnist for both papers. Welcome to you all today. Now, a reminder to all of our viewers that if you like great royal updates every week, then make sure that you press that subscribe button and never miss another episode. Right, there's a lot to cover. Let's get cracking. I'm going to start with you, Natasha. Since last week's program, we've seen and heard from the King. What yeah. can you tell us? <laughs> so on Saturday night, he issued a letter thanking the public, really, for their well wishes and their messages of support. Um, and it's the first time that um, we'd all heard from the King since the announcement of his diagnosis. So, you know, it was really reassuring from people to hear from him directly. Uh, and then on Sunday, he went to church at usual. So again, that was reassuring for people to see him. He was waving at people there. So again, appearing as if all is well. Um, and then he was photographed coming to London this week for his treatments. So again, very much we understand this is part of a plan from AIDS so that he is continuing to be being seen, you know, during this period. Well, um, Richard, as heartening as though a lot of people will find this, it's still going to be a long while before he's back to business as usual, isn't it? I think it's going to be a very long while before it's back to business as usual. Um, the question is, how long will he be able to go through with these uh, organised, uh, curated photo calls? Yeah. That's what it would amount to. And certainly while his condition is manageable, but we all know what happens with cancer treatment. Um, people react, their bodies react in different ways, and it is possible that at some stage he won't want to be uh, seen uh, and won't be so visible. Um, but we'll, we'll wait and see. I think he'll persist with this as long as he can. Yeah, indeed. As Sarah, he's showing, I think, with that, that round of pictures and the communication, that he's just not going to be the sort of person who will willingly take it lying down, is he? No, I mean he's obviously he's obviously prepared to fight it. I think I think it's you know I, there's a lot of question that people keep saying you know, what's he actually got? What's he actually got? And I think he's kept that back, and I think that's the right thing to do because I think he does deserve a little bit of privacy. It's not an easy journey to make. Mm, I agree. Now Natasha, William and his family have gone to Norfolk for a lovely little half term holiday. It's half term here in the UK. Do you think his plans seem to have changed or can we expect him to still be looking after Catherine and the kids and doing the school run etc? It seems that things are continuing as normal. They're at Amna Hall, so they're going to be socialising with the King. We know that that's where the grandchildren um, love to relax and have fun. And then after this week, it is going to be business as normal. He's going to be looking after Catherine and taking the children to school. Um, I think it's possible he might be going to the BAFTAs this Sunday, but again, they're just going to have to see how things are at home. I was very intrigued by this quote. There was a report at the weekend that suggested there was a slight sense of bewilderment at William's determination to so fiercely protect his boundaries when it comes to his diary. I'm going to use that line in the ne my next HR cons consultation with someone. A good line. The other word you could insert, of course, is stubborn. Yeah. Um, William is stubbornly sticking to what he has agreed with his father, that his family is the priority. I mean, this is all very much goes back to William's own childhood mm -hmm. and Charles's early marriage the early years of parenthood when, of course, he, he, he neglected to spend a great deal of time with William and Harry when they were growing up and, you know, the consequences we all know. Um, and William is determined that family life is his number one priority. I mean, a lot of people were speculating that when the king got ill, well, William will have to be deputy king and step in and do all those things. But what are all those things that Charles does? I mean, he's going to continue to, to receive the Prime Minister, either in person or by Zoom, mm -hmm. and he's going to answer, go through all his state papers, the famous red boxes. He's very fast at that. He gets through them very quickly. William doesn't do any of that. The other stuff that, which Charles does is meet uh, ministers and diplomats. Now, that, at this stage, there's no indication that William's going to do any of that. I mean, William, I mean, the thing is, you know, William is a different generation to his father, so it's natural, you know, I think, the, I yeah. think that younger generation are more conscious of spending time with their children than men are, certainly. Now, I think, obviously, a lot of people will absolutely support that yeah. sentiment. It's, it's understandable to give his life, his family, as yeah. normal life as possible, but 
they're not a normal family and it's not a normal situation. No. So how do you balance that tension? Well, also, the other thing is, is that Kate is going to recover, isn't she, quite quickly. She's young, she's healthy, she's fit, she's had a, an operation. She will be back, I imagine, quite quickly on stream. I mean, I don't expect her to be hanging around too long. I don't know. I feel like they've managed our expectations about it being quite a while, yeah. at least yeah. after Easter. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. at that point, you know, that's, that's not... Long, right. that's, that's, as we know on this show, that's a long time in the royal family. <laughs> Richard, whether he likes it or not, though... William's under the spotlight. He, he, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and he has got obligations and um, he is the heir to the throne. Uh, he, 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 you know, what are we saying here? Does he have to shape up? I don't think we've reached that stage yet. I mean, there, are, there aren't people crying out for uh, kingly duties from him. And I think he is being cut a lot of slack because we don't really know what uh, Catherine, what this procedure is that Catherine has had, mm. um, how ill or well she is, we're not getting progress reports at all. Um, and we haven't seen her since, uh, since she came out of hospital. So, uh, you know, he, we, he's got to manage those expectations. Do you think that, I mean, imagine what must be going through William's head in that he watched his father wait so long, decades, to become the king. He probably in the back of his mind had a sort of a sense that he would be waiting decades, but mm. that's not going to be the case for him. No, that's it? definitely not going to yeah. be the case, because just because of the age of the king. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. I mean, I think the thing about William and Catherine is that they've been going through an awful lot with this whole sort of nightmare with the Sussexes. You know, I, I, I suspect a lot, of, a lot of what's going on in their private life is to do with the sort of fallout from that, because being, you know, being accused of being a racist is not a nice thing. I imagine it's upset Catherine deeply. Yeah. Um, and I think William is probably just sort of drawing his arms around his family, as you would do naturally as a, as a good parent. I think, they should, I think they should wheel out Princess Anne. I think she's the answer to all the royal family's <laughs> problems. In fact, wheel I would her out. I would send She'll Prince wheel herself out. We know how no nonsense I, she is. I think we should send Princess Anne to deal with Harry and Meghan. Because I think, you know, if you got a call from Princess Anne, you'd oh, sit up jolly straight. I'd be terrified. Yeah. And if she said, I'm not cross with you, Harry, I'm just very disappointed. <laughs> oh, the yeah. chill. I, I, if, I were, if I were the king, I would say, do you know what, Anne, Send for Anne. Please, just go and do it. Montecito's lovely this time of year. Exactly. Yeah. Jump on a plane, yeah. take your horse whip, sort it out. I want somebody <laughs> to write that fan fiction before the next episode of Palace <laughs> Confidential, please. Now, I, I want to move on, uh, Natasha, to a report about the support that Sarah Ferguson has apparently given to the King. Yeah, it's quite sweet, really. Um, it was reported at the weekend that they've been exchanging heartfelt letters about um, their cancer diagnoses because um, obviously Sarah Ferguson has also been diagnosed with skin cancer and it seems like their two um, conditions have brought them closer together. Charles has referred to it in the past as a beastly disease and, you know, it's potentially a maybe positive outcome that they're talking more. Conversations yet again that we thought we would never be having even 12 months ago. Richard, can you see this blossoming into a full-blown friendship? Uh, I can't see it being a big uh, bromance, really, um, or whatever you call a, a romance between... A, a fromance? No, no, a we, don't, yeah. we don't need <laughs> well, we having that, another romance. A, no, that, not no. a romance. <laughs> but this, I mean, he, he's a, he is affectionate towards Sarah. He's been very exasperated by her over the years, but mainly he admires how she's stuck by his brother. Andrew's been in a pretty dark place ever since the whole Jeffrey Epstein affair uh, got going, and um, I think he, he, he really respects what Sarah's done um, in standing by him. Um, but I don't think that necessarily means that when, and let's assume everyone, does make a full uh, recovery, that she's going to be at top table at um, Windsor Castle every weekend. Well, I don't know. I did a pub quiz with Sarah Ferguson before Christmas. She's quite fun. Mm, so, no, she's a laugh. She's, yeah. a, she's a properly nice sort of, she's a force of nature. And yeah. I, think, I think her presence in Andrew's life, as, 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 as Richard said, says is a, great, is a great bonus for the king because it sort of means yeah. that he's being taken care of in a, in a way. Indeed. You know. Now, Sarah, it's very nice to have you back. Before we move on, I just want to say you've been busy with a new show of your own. Yes, I'm doing something called The Reaction. Um, with Andrew Pierce, who is a colleague on the newspaper and a very old friend of mine. Right. And we do a thing every Wednesday and it's just pulling together all the stories of the, of the week, uh, all the news stories, that we pol from everything from politics to real stories. I mean, this week we did a lot on uh, Harry and Meghan and them renaming their website Sussex dot com rather shamelessly. Yeah, it's, it's fun. And um, uh, I hope people 
enjoy it. it absolutely and you can watch the reaction every Wednesday on the Daily Mail's YouTube channel we'll put a link in the description below now before we get on to the almighty Sussex website round <laughs> let's move on to some of your thoughts now more than a million of you watched last Thursday's show and more than 6,000 of you left us a comment thank you so much for that I'm just gonna I think they're wheeling in the champagne to celebrate for us right now <laughs> yeah, I should think so I'll wait <laughs> no? no mm. That's awkward, isn't it? Mm. Okay, I'll get on with that. Another brilliant update, says Matthew Wallen. Thank you, team. You make me feel so proud to be a monarchist. God save the king. Huesma is concerned for the king, meanwhile, writing, people need to understand how badly King Charles could be affected even by an ordinary infection during treatment. He has to stay away from crowds and especially handshakes. The comments keep coming in about the less high-profile royals. After Rebecca English told us about Princess Anne mucking in, to help cover some of Charles's engagements. Maggie Swithenbank says, thank you, Rebecca, for showcasing the incredible work and schedule of the wonderful Princess Anne. She's not often recognized for her punishing work schedule and her no-nonsense approach. Well, we celebrate her a lot here for that. Yeah. Love her. Meanwhile, Catherine Hall says, what a lot of you have said over the past couple of weeks. Edward and Sophie deserve more credit and more respect. And finally, Susanna Avery, AKA strong opinions are us, wrote in after our discussion over whether, whether Prince William should be encouraged to mend fences with his brother Harry. She says, I couldn't agree more with Richard Eden regarding this appalling pressure being put on Prince William to mend fences with Harry. The latter's behavior has been disgraceful. Putting the burden on William is a classic case of blaming the victim. Goodness me. Well, keep those comments coming in. Many of the senior royals have spent the past few days in the calming surrounds of their rural retreat, Sandringham, away from the spotlight. And there they've been recuperating from what has and continues to be a pretty difficult time. The calm was broken, however, as a row broke out over a new website from, guess who, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Natasha, for those who haven't kept up, can you please explain the saga to us? Yeah, well, as Sarah mentioned, it's Sussex.com, which is a new invention. It's the kind of relaunching of the Archwell website, which was kind of a front for their business and philanthropic aims. Um, and part of the explanation that was given is that, firstly, their team say that Sussex is their name, so they're just using that. And secondly, Archwell was kind of too favourable to their first child, and using the Sussex name is kind of more unifying for the family. Um, obviously, it's put quite a few noses out of joint. Yes, um, uh, some people are saying it's a, it's a betrayal them. of the Queen. Yes, um, well, the, in their deal when they left as working royals, they said that they would not use their titles, which of course Sussex is, um, for any kind of uh, business work or financial gain. And this kind of sits in an awkward position with that. Mm. Now, Richard, obviously supporters of the Sussexes have said and might say it's their name, it's still their crest, why shouldn't they use it? Yeah, I get that, but I also don't quite get why they want to do this. Let's not uh, forget that the, uh, the Sussexes are the anti-royal royals. They loathe the institution, judging by everything they have said and written about them since, uh, since they left Britain. Uh, and yet they can't seem to sever the bond. Mm. This link is, is irresistible, it seems. Yeah. And, and, and it, you know, one doesn't have to be cynical about this, but because clearly there are financial benefits from being associated with the monarchy, not being uh, against it. Mm. And you wrote in your column, Sarah, didn't you, that they are beyond redemption and that you'd like to see the king take a more drastic step. Yeah, I mean, I would like to say Sussex is not their name, it's their title. Their name is Mountbatten well, Windsor. Well, that's why I was confused. So it's different. It's, the Sussex is a title that was conferred upon them on, the, on their marriage by the late queen. It's not their name. So that is wrong when they say that. And if it is, the only way it could be their name is if they changed it to Sussex by deed poll, uh, which would be an extraordinary thing to do. Um, we hear, I think we heard yesterday, didn't we, Natasha, that they are now, the children are now apparently called Sussex. Yeah, it was a report in the Times that that's how the children, they're going about that name instead of Mountbatten Windsor, so that's what they're using. Right. Whether or not it's been a legal change, it's not quite clear, but okay. yeah, they're using it. But this is quite, I think this is quite dangerous territory for them, because that is, it is a title, and, and there could be implications because it's not, it's, it's not their name. It's just not their name. Their family name is Mountbatten Windsor. Now, what do you think the timing is on this, Richard? How long would this have been in the planning? Because I'm sure that there will be cynics who can see that it's, it's landed at a very difficult time when there might be less energy 
to take it on from the firm? Yeah, I mean, there are royal uh, focuses on ill health at the moment. Mm. Let's face it, we're, we're all concerned about the welfare of the King and the Princess of Wales. Um, the Sussex drama is an endless drama. It carries on. Whether it was cynically done at this stage, I couldn't possibly say. But, I mean, many will think that there is something in that. Um, they've obviously been working on it for some time. Uh, these things uh, don't come cheap. It's a complete revamp and probably a very expensive one of their website. Uh, they're constantly going through reinvention. I mean, I don't know how many times you and I and, and Natasha yeah. have, have written about relaunches of the, of the Sussex project. Um, they're constantly doing it. Um, I think one issue that, that Sarah touched on is interesting about in her column, she's, she suggested that it's time for the King to take away that title for the Parliament. I think it would have to be a parliamentary mm -hmm. act that, that removed it. But that would uh, elevate, if you like, Meghan to a princess because she takes her title from her husband. You know, he is a prince. She would then become a princess. And it's interesting that on this new website, they don't use the Duchess title. It's just Prince Harry and Meghan. Yeah. Um, it's almost uh, a parenthesis there. Mm. Oh, yes, we could squeeze princess in there, mm. but we've got no room for duchess. Duchess sounds a bit old-fashioned. Um, oh so gosh. I think there are dangers in that. No, I agree. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. But don't, let's, you know, let's not forget, this is a couple who trademarked their daughter's name, lilibet.com. So we, I think we can see where this is all going. Well, time will tell. And there was an eyebrow, there was an eyebrow-raising intervention, Natasha, from the journalist Petronella Wyatt a couple of days ago, who suggested that Harry's visit to the King wasn't the big group hug that some might have hoped. Yeah, I mean, Petronella is very well sourced, and she said it was in a piece for the Telegraph that Prince Harry did not want to be in a room with Queen Camilla, um, and that was a wish that was apparently followed through. So uh, it was kind of in the way that it, the meeting was reported, it was said that it was just between Prince Harry and the King, kind of no mention of Queen Camilla, but this is a confirmation that she wasn't there in that desire that was ha caused by um, a wish from Prince Harry. I would have thought um, the feeling was mutual, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, absolutely yeah. mutual. Yeah. 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 It sounds breathless takingly rude if it's as accurate yeah. as Patrick yeah. yeah. brought it. But also, but also the other thing to say is, is, is that I, you know, I didn't understand why they only had half an hour together. But they, mu they he must have known the king must have known that they had done this thing with the with the website because they would have been informed in advance. So it sort of explains. Must they? I mean, they wouldn't be the first time they've been blindsided. Well, I imagine they would. Do you not think they would have done? I don't know. I mean, on the timing, I think it's it's very clear. It's in line with you know this week they're in Canada for these mm. events to promote the Invictus Games. That's why they're there. So it seems to me that it would makes sense to be part of a strategy that was well planned to kind of maximise publicity mm. around the Invictus Games, get people talking mm. about that and that makes sense. Maybe they would have known about that or foreseen that something might have been coming from them around this time this week. Mm. Richard Kay, there, there is sometimes, or probably more than sometimes, the feeling that it's one step forward and two back with this transatlantic relationship, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it, that's exactly how it's characterised and that's how the palace viewed as well. I mean, they, they despair at their activities and uh, most of the time. Um, as for the King and, and Queen, uh, they're, they're very troubled by it still, they're hurt and they just consider it a constant drama and um, frankly if Camilla absented herself from that uh, meeting with Harry I think she probably did, a, did herself a favour. I think she did too. And the yeah. other thing to say is that without the royal title Harry is just a slightly balding bit thick ex soldier and she's just a kind of just moderately say what think, pretty <laughs> sort of you know quite good actress i mean that that their currency is their is their association with the british royal family and without it i'm not really sure they've made any i mean they could have done they had they've had plenty of opportunity to show that they are more than just royals but they haven't done that they've well, just it, traded on their association that's you, all they've done you are preempting some of my questions oh, somewhat because they no that's fine but they're they're back in vancouver Back in a private jet and always back raising eyebrows. Yeah. I mean, she's obsessed with Canada, isn't she? She said something about her, this website had been designed by Canadians, yeah. so it must be good. <laughs> Yeah, well, she she was living in Toronto, I think, when she was filming a lot of suits, and it was it was when uh, they were in the Invictus Games was in Canada that they first kind of announced their relationship. Mm. So it kind of yeah, they're they're them as a couple, they're very linked mm. to Canada. And she's back on the podcasting bus. 
Yes, with Lemonada Media, I think it is. Um, and the reason I hesitate is, you know, it, this is no Spotify, this company. It's nowhere near as well known as Spotify, which is, you know, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, podcast production company in the world. Um, but yes, uh, Meghan Markle has signed a deal with them and she's going to be, I think they're going to be re-releasing um, the previous podcast she did, Archetypes. Oh, thank God for that. Yes, I'm sure everyone is thrilled. <laughs> Number one on your list. Oh my yeah. goodness, I yeah. must take a whole weekend off. Well, exactly, it's half term, so there we yeah. go. And um, she'll also be recording um, a new, uh, dynamic new podcast. So exactly what that will look like Brilliant. or sound like, we don't know, but Brilliant. that is in the pipeline. I think she should just do a line of shoes would you buy them? Well, she has got fabulous ankles. I mean, let's be honest, she's got the best ankles I've ever seen on anyone, really. And she likes shoes. Well, that's shoes. great for her, but you know, the rest <laughs> of us will be buying and the shoes. And we all love shoes, and she's good at shoes. I mean, that's really what she's very good at. I mean, all credit to her, her shoes are fabulous. Well, she's probably already thought of that. Let's watch this space. <laughs> I mean, Natasha makes a good point, Richard. Lemonada Media, very respected, independent firm. They ain't female no founded as well. Female founded. Oh, forgive yes. me, yes. Yeah. bad feminist. Yeah. Yeah. Female founded. Yeah. They're no Spotify. I mean, would it be unkind to say that this is market forces at work? This is this is more the I, Sussex's I think, level now. I think this is the Sussex's level. It's a realization has sunk in. They're not global influencers as they like to think themselves. And but their website adjust, says they are. Yeah, but they are going to have to adjust their expectation, and I think this is adjusting it downwards. Well, so what is that? I mean, the thing is, is you Netflix have to deal. actually demonstrate some talent. You know, if you're going to sort of hang out, if you, the thing about America and Hollywood and all those people like Oprah and stuff is that they're really good at what they do. Yeah. I mean, whatever you say about them, they have proper, proper, proper talent. Beyonce, all these people that they hang out with. I have not seen yet what Harry and Meghan's talent is other than being cross, uh, angry with the royal family. That seems to be their sort of principle you know, that, that's their USP. And I think they just need to show that they can be more than that. And they haven't really done that. They still do seem to be quite a big draw. You know, they still yeah. command attention. Yeah, they're good at generating headlines. Yeah. Like the Kardashians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think that's, mm. I think that's a really good comparison because I'm, you know, people are starting to say, well, why, why do we actually, you mm. know, what are they there? What are they for? It's a, it's a fascinating modern media mm. thing being played mm. out, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But I always think, you know, what that Spotify executive said about them, which was that they were grifters. I mean, you know, corporate executives don't tend to sort of stick their necks no. out like yeah, that. Yeah, that was savage. No. Very true. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they tend to be quite circumspect and, and, and that was really quite sort of raw, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm still waiting for somebody to get him a nice um, few big whiskeys and hear the whole story. <laughs> if you're listening, if you're watching, please, I'll buy. Well, it's been a tough few weeks for the royal family, as we know, so we thought we'd put together a montage to cheer all of us up, especially you, our viewers. Here are some very funny, candid moments of the royal family out and about over the years. Rewind that bit and watch it again. I think we all deserve it. And now, if you're still with us, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And there's just time to say thank you to my guests, Sarah Vine, Natasha Livingston, and Richard Kay, and to you for watching. See you next week. Bye-bye.